rolling. Start with Haggai two and six. I think we brought this out before. Because for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Right, and how is the most high gonna do that? He's gonna do that through the missiles, alright? And also chariots. We always mention this. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I, right, he's, he's going to shake all nations because when Yahweh comes back, there's, no gonna, there's not going to be any other nation ruling, all right? right? That's going to be the establishment of our kingdom, all right? The Israelites, you understand? So these other nations, man, they're not, they're not going to have any more dominion. We're not gonna have to worry about let's say we take over and then we gotta worry about the other nations coming up against us, you know what I'm saying, trying to take us down. Well, for one, they will lose terribly. We got our spiritual powers, they can't right. do nothing with us. They will lose terribly. We got our spiritual power, like you said. And it's all prophecy at the end of the day. We're not gonna fall once we get into rulership. And I will fill the house with glory saith the Lord of hosts. The house, all right? The house of David, all right? Which is another term for the elect. Also, the house of David is the people that actually walk with David all the right. time, all right? And the house of David is here today, all right? The elect. The elect, which we call ourselves the hopeful elect, all right? The, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Right, and when the, when the Mosai makes his power known, guess what? The other nations, they're going to have to vomit up their riches. All right? They're going to have to give it up to us. What is that, Isaiah 61? You going to get it? Or? Uh, I'll, I'll get it after. Okay. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's sit on that. Okay. See if you can find that in Isaiah. Isaiah 60. Give up the riches. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 3 and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I the Lord which call thee by thy name am the God of Israel right and you know the least they got their the reserves of all their wealth and their gold and you know, a lot of their wealth is made up of like real estate, you know, like land, and also they, they own the banks so they can really print as much money as they would like to, you know what I'm saying? But there's going to be an end to that monetary system once we get into our world. So then we're going to be spending Benjamins and Franklins, 20s and 10s in the kingdom, man. 150s. We're gonna see it. Then we're gonna see a dollar bill with George Washington on it. And we spending this stuff. The eye, the eye, the pyramid on the back of it. I know, right? You got anything else? That's what's the right? 
so I can get this other piece up. Yeah, that's Isaiah 61.6. That's what I really want. Isaiah 61.6. You can read from the top. This is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the, unto the meek. Okay. He hath... And we are the meek, all right? Who this gospel is really for is for the people right here under the sun. Right. So-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans because we are in a low state as a people. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're the ones struggling. He oh, has, since, you hold, since you said that, hold that that scripture where it says they are not in trouble as other people that's what is that songs it's a psalms chapter 73 and 5 they are not in trouble as other men neither are they plagued like other men right so you really think that Esau is really in trouble like we are he has the fatness of the earth. He has all the riches. He has the power. Right. I was thinking about that today. Like, our problems would really be solved once your house shot comes back and takes down this man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because then we'll have, we'll, we'll have riches. All right? Peace. Peace. Our women, they won't come up against us. You know what I'm saying? He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Right. And either we're locked mentally or we're locked physically. Because you go, you go look at the statistics, the majority of people that are in the prison system are our people, right. so called blacks so-called Hispanics, you know what I'm saying? And going back to being locked up mentally, you know, they try to put the straights on us, you understand? They try to block you from, from seeing the light and doing the right thing in the society, you know? So to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Right, and we're doing that, right? Uh -huh. These Christian churches, they're not doing that. They want to block you from knowing your identity and your nationality and who you really are as a people. Right. They're not teaching you the truth. They're not even teaching you that your house is coming back. Yeah. Exactly. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. I was speaking about this with someone I know a couple of days ago. He was like, oh, you go to church? Because um, something, something came up when we started talking about the scriptures he was like we go to you go to church oh you know how we started we started with the mo the mot to the b right. that's how that information started and then um i told him about the mltb and what it is you know what i'm saying and then, um, one conversation led to another he's like oh do you do you go to church i'm like no he's like why not I'm like you don't need to go to church to worship god for one and it's for two Church is a joke. They don't teach you nothing. All they do it's is a stumbling block. All they do is sing. All they do is dance. Or they or they kick you that prosperity doctrine. Right. You know, trying to be motivational speakers. Oh, rise and shine. Today's another day. You gotta go out and get it. Believe in yourself. You're special. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve. Just go out there and get it. Them passes, they slick talking. They like pimps. Yeah. I remember years ago. It was 2014, I won't forget it. He was like, this is, it's 2014. That means this is the year of double blessings. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, these slick talking pastors, they like pimps, man. Yeah, when they eat that shit up. <laughs> right. People, they, they, they like, oh man. This is the he year He said it, it must be true. Seven, can you add that? If you get 14, this is the year of double blessings. <laughs> I was like, wow. So I was like, that's so simple. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they, see, when they heard that, though, they should have got up and left. That's some bullshit. Bro, I swear that everything like, I love, I passed out. That's what I, did. I literally fainted. <laughs> fell out. Oh, man. Oh, well, that was, that was
Let's start. This is 61 and 3. Let's start. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. All right? That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. They're going to be called the trees of righteousness. All right? You know, the scriptures speak about how, like, you have the, the branches that fell off. What is that? Romans 11 speaks about that. And, uh, and how the branches are going to be grafted back in. Well, that's talking about the Gentiles, the Gentiles of the nation of Israel. I'm not talking about the natural Gentiles, all right? So again, this is like another example of how the nation of Israel is likened unto a tree, all right? I mean, picture it like this. When we come into this, to this fold, we come into this truth, and then now we have that solid foundation, you know what I'm saying? And then as you come into this truth, you're supposed to be rooted. You know what I'm saying? So that you don't move, so that you don't fall off. Right. All right. The scriptures speak about being rooted. As a matter of fact, do you want to get that? Oh, I found it. That's Ephesians 3, 17. This is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Hold on. of his glory to be strengthened with the mighty the riches of his glory what is the real riches the true riches this knowledge and this truth that we have and then of course we are going to get actual physical riches in the kingdom you know? every Israelite is going to be good All right, you're not going to see a homeless Jake in the kingdom right. struggling you know what I'm saying right. like, like how we see on a day to day basis in the so called black community Latino community. You know what I'm saying? Riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Yahawashai may dwell in your hearts by faith. Yahawashai may dwell in your hearts by faith. Alright? Because Yahawashai is our Lord and Savior. Right. He's, he's the one who's going to come back and deliver us. You understand? And if not for him, then the nation of Israel would be doomed. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Right, and it's said to be rooted and grounded with love. Now, according to the Bible, what is love? What is, what is love according to the Bible? Keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. All right, get the precept. Because the law, statutes, and commandments, it, it is our foundation. All right, it's, it's what it's what helps you stay on your pivot. You know what I'm saying? And it's also what made us holy and separate as a nation. All right, the fact that the Most High gave us His laws, statutes, and commandments. 
He didn't give that to any other nation. You understand? I mean, went into this last week how the Most High, he, 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 he breathed that breath into Adam. All right? He did that by, by, by dealing with him. All right? I got it. Establishing that covenant. This is 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Right. So that's how you love God, the Most High, Yahweh. All right? You don't do it by just, by the sheer words. You have to do it by actions. Right. You want to get that scripture? But that's the thing. I was, I was, I was like thinking about that i'm like these christians the way they move like what what separates them from a let's say like an atheist like like what actions do you have that separate y'all yeah you got all types of adultery that goes on right within the, these christian churches you know what i'm saying people will sit here and say that they love god but then they'll turn around and get a tattoo right you, you go day by day just moving through the seat of your pants you're not governed by nothing right they just do things on the fly right don't go ahead and eat what they want to eat. Huh. Like, oh, we can eat pork. God made everything clean. All you, you gotta do is pray over it. Mm -hmm. some nutcases. What did I say to get? You lost me. Um, oh. I remember. Matthew 15 and 8. That's also in Isaiah. Isaiah 29 and 13. Get both. Matthew what? Matthew 15 and 8. And then Isaiah 29 and 13. Matthew 15 and 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Now that sounds exactly like what it says in Isaiah 29, showing you that the Old Testament and the New Testament go hand in hand. Alright? This is Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore the Lord said for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men the precept of men all right you go to the church your pastor will tell you it's all right you don't got to keep the law statutes and commandments you can do it you can really do what you want to do, really. That's essentially what they what they say. Yeah. Talking about the laws are done away with. The laws are done away with. The how come? Yeah, I wish I quoted out of the New Testament. He quoted out of the Old Testament in the New Testament multiple times. And we just read this scripture, uh, Matthew 15 and 8 and Isaiah 29. How how uh, how Israel doesn't. They don't take action, all right? They say that they love the Most High, but they don't They don't show it with their actions, all right? All right? So again, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they go, they go, to, they go together, all right? Good, okay. what, what is that in Hebrews? Um, you know, what does it say? It comes in the volume of the book. You want to pull that one out real quick? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 then said I lo I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O God 
Not half the book. Not 25% of the book. But the entire book. You have to deal with the entire book. Alright. Boys, where was you at? Ephesians 3 and 19. This is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. And to know the love of Yahweh Shai, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all the we, all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Wait, read that again. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Right. Unto him be glory in the church by Yahawashai throughout all ages, world without end. Right. Amen. So all glory goes to the most high. Right. Do, do his only begotten son. Alright? And through the grace and the power of the Most High, we're gonna rise up and take over the world. You know what I'm saying? Because when the kingdom of heaven is established on earth, there's not gonna be other any other nation that's gonna come up against us, like I said. You know what I'm saying? That's it or not. Uh, you wanna go back to Isaiah 61? Isaiah chapter 61 verse 4 and they shall build the old waste they shall rise up the former desolation and they shall repair the waste cities the desolation of many generations right because we're gonna rebuild the earth we're not gonna put in the work of this we do it right but the other nations are because they're gonna be under us they're gonna be our servants you understand Get that scripture where it says they shall build thy walls. Because we're going to be able to truly rest when we're in the kingdom. Alright? We're going to be like the brains. We ain't going to be plowing fields. You know what I'm saying? Or laying brick. Laying brick. We ain't going to be out there for 8 hours, 8, 12 hours in the hot sun doing that like we was when we was in slavery. You know what I'm saying? And depending on some, some brother's line of work, they do that today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They'll work 8, eight 12 hours for Easter and they get paid, you know, maybe $20 an hour, $25 an hour. You know what I'm saying? You know, no, when in all actuality, we're worth much more than that. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're the chosen people of the Most High. And here it, are, here it is, we're breaking our backs for Esau, working for the man, paying taxes for him. You know what I'm saying? Right. This, this this really isn't life, you know what I'm saying? We're really just out here just surviving. Right. We really come to think of it. But you know, Jake being simple minded as he is, he just thinks because he has himself a good paying job, he got he might have his girl, you know what I'm saying? He might have a child. You know, he got his own place. And he got a car, he's he's doing good, he's alright in life. When in reality all this shit that you see it's about to come crashing down, man. We yeah. gotta look at the big picture. We gotta put things in the proper perspective. All this shit is getting ready to pass away. Yeah. What is that, Micah 2 and 10? This is not our rest. Exactly. This is not our rest. But you know, Jake, he's willing to do anything. He's really, he's willing to go above and beyond. There's nothing he won't do to get what he wants in this, this society. All right? Just to satisfy himself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even if it involves taking the um, jump shot, you know what I'm saying? To do anything. And then guess what? When the time comes around for the MOTB, what do you think Jake's gonna do? I'll take that too. The Jake that's not a part of the elect, they're gonna fold. Uh -huh. They're gonna be like, oh man, I gotta get back in the system. We gotta get on we gotta get on the grid because I gotta feed my family. I'm out here starving. Right. I gotta I gotta keep my money. I'm not trying to give all this stuff up. So when they roll out their new system, Jake's 
Jake's gonna cross over. Right. Jake that doesn't know any better, he's gonna cross over. Especially if you took that jump shot. Yeah. Like what else goes with it? Oh, oh, especially the women too. Oh yeah. You know the women. Yeah, yeah. For they sure. gonna fold. For sure. They're gonna they're gonna be telling Jake, like, yo, yo. What, what we gonna do? We gotta get down with this. Like just take it. Just take it, it's nothing. Like well, who is that? Rebecca's wife? Curse the most high. It was Rebecca, right? That's Job. Job's Job's wife. He was like, yo, Chris could just curse the most high. Like, are you crazy? They might have been uh, the husband might be like, yo, whoa. Cause you know, because you know Revelation 13 and 16, that's a famous scripture. So when it rolls out, best believe that they're gonna turn up the um censoring, alright? You're gonna turn up the censoring on the internet. So Jake's gonna have it in the back of his mind. Whether it be in the back of his mind or in the front of his mind, I'm like, yo, this, this, could this be the MOTB that, that the Book of Revelation speaks about? Right. And then he's gonna he's gonna come up, he's gonna propose that idea to his woman or whatever or his family member. They be like, yo, well, could this be this? Could this mean that? And they're gonna be like, just, just take it. Yeah. Well, what's to think about? Well, what else are we gonna do? What else we gonna do? We gotta eat. You know what I'm saying? All right. So that's why it's not good to be carnal minded. You know, you're supposed to be spiritual. Uh -huh. Have your spiritual eye open. Because when you got your spiritual eye open, you're gonna see the shit coming from a mile away. We can see that that prophecy is getting ready to come to pass. And we're looking for it. We're looking out for it. Really, we, we can't wait. We want them to hurry up and do it. Because the sooner the better. That Romans 8 and 6 he tells you about being carnal minded. What was that you called for? You about building the wall? You want that? Isaiah 60 and 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in mine wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Right, so it's going to be a changing of roles. The other nations are going to be under us. All these top people in the world that you think are, are somebody, they're going to be nobody once our rulership comes. Right. What is that on um, the songs? Find, find their kings and chains. Get that one real quick. Because I was watching a video today. You know Tyrese, the singer? He was in child support court, and he was going, he was, he was going, he was going through it with his um, his, his baby mother. He's got to pay ten thousand dollars a month for, for child support. Which, what the fuck do you need that much money for for a child? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that just goes to show you how the society really caters towards men. But um, the judge that he, woman. yeah, but the judge that he was dealing with was a Edomite judge, and the judge was he got disrespectful. He lost his cool and he started like dealing with his emotions. Which a judge when you when you're a judge, you're not supposed to lead with your emotions. Yeah, you're not supposed to pick sides. You're not really supposed to pick sides. So I was thinking about it, I'm like, yo, Tyree's going through it in this man's court system and his judge, you gotta answer to this damn judge. It's like man, you saw it really came up in the world. <laughs> now when I'm thinking about it like how in the future, you saw he's gonna be a nobody. He's, he's gonna be nothing. Is this the man? Yeah. I was thinking about that scripture too. Get that one. Hold that. What is that? Isaiah. Um, Get that too. Isaiah. Um, but, but, but read what you got there. This is Psalms chapter 149, verse 8. To bind their kings with chains. Wait, read up a little bit. Psalms chapter 149 and 7 to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron right to execute upon them the judgment written because you got to think about it when, when the missiles drop you think you think the elites are going to try to do they're going to try to preserve their life because naturally, they have the riches and the assets to do that. 
they got their doomsday bunkers. So they're gonna be like, all right, let's head to the doomsday bunkers when it's Armageddon. And they're gonna be, their life is gonna be preserved, but it's gonna be preserved for them to go into captivity. You understand? Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14? Yeah, Isaiah 14. The, the, the point is verse 16, but you can start off a couple of verses if you want. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 15. Yet, yet thou, yet thou shalt be, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. What verse you at? Fifteen. Right. He's, he saw he's going to be brought down to hell. All right. Now, that word hell just means the grave, and the grave is physical condition that's played out on earth that's what hell really is right it's a condition on earth it's not a place where you go to after you die and you're just burning for eternity and you're getting poked at by the devil with, with, the, with the red horns and the pitchfork right. you know that's nothing but a fallacy see that's what that's why it's important to understand words look up these words to the sides of the pit. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof? that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. And as the remnant of those that are slain thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their father. So he's, he's going down, man. Like, his future is really looking grim. People are going to be like, yo, this was the man that had all the power over the world and that was raising all this hell? Because that's how low he's going to be in the kingdom. That they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Right, and... Edomites that say that, oh, we don't have nothing to do with what took place 400 years ago during the slave trade or during colonialism. Guess what? You're going to have to pay for the sins of your forefathers. Right. Because you are technically you are technically your ancestors. Right. Because there's, there's nothing new under the sun. Right? The scriptures say that the Mosai's judgment is like a ring. Let me see if I can get that one. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bitter and pools of water, and I will sweep it with a besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. Most of he's coming back with destruction, man. He's not coming back to just play games, all right? To let all the wickedness continue. Most of is gonna establish order on this earth, and he's gonna do that 
His second is was 5 and 42. This is 2nd Edris, chapter 5, verse 42. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring, like as there is no slackness of the last. Okay, because a ring, it goes around, it keeps going around. The circumference is perfect. Even so, there is no swiftness of the first. So there's no corners that Esau can cut, all right? There's no way where he can hide from his judgment. Because he's, he's going to have to drink from the cup. Continue on it. Yeah. So I answered and said, Couldst thou not make those that have been made and be now and that are for to come at once, that thou mightest shew thy judgment the sooner? Then answered he, me and said the creature may not haste above the maker neither may the world hold them at once that shall be created therein and i said as thou hast said unto thy servant that thou which givest life to all has given life at once to the creature that thou hast created and the creature bear it, even so it might now also bear them that now be present at once. That's all, man. Get Jeremiah 49 and 12. Man. This is Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. Right, and that's speaking about the Israelites. Because we are the Most High's chosen people at the end of the day. And then look what the Most High did to us because we went off and didn't listen to him. Right. All right, he's got, he's got Esau and the other nations over us, oppressing us, all right? So ultimately we had to drink from that cup of judgment. So what do you think is gonna happen to Esau? And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. About Babylon, he saw he, he's gonna fall. He's gonna fall hard, flat on his face. You know what that, that? That made me think of Isaiah 66. Is there any more on that? Did it something on that? Let's right. uh, get a precept for that. What is that? Isaiah 66. Isaiah 63 and 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. This is a future prophecy. This is speaking about the Lord Yahweh Shah. Right? And Basra is the ancient city of Edom. Alright? But you could say that modern day Basra is America. Alright? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. 
wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Right. And, and, and to further expound, you know, Basra is a, is a city, but what's a city that doesn't have the people to read? So Basra was inhabited by, by, by Esau, Edomites. So when the Lord comes, he's coming back for all the Edomites, all right? There's not gonna be an Edomite left on earth that has that has a good life, all right? That's that's living that's living swell, you know. He's still living fat. He's still calling he's still calling the shots. No, you just read that in Isaiah 19, how not Isaiah 19, Isaiah 14, how he's gonna be on the bottom, all right? He's gonna be in such a low state that people are gonna really be questioning. Wow, was this man really empowered at a certain point in time? You had to see it to believe it. Yeah, yeah, you really had to be there. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treaded in the wine vat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. Right. This is, that's poetic, you know, it doesn't literally mean that the Lord is going to come back and have just like blood sprinkled upon his garment, you know what I'm saying? This just simply means that when the Lord comes back, he's coming back with a vengeance, alright? And a lot of people, they're going to be taking out that day, alright? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there, was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my remnants. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeem is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold, therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. Now you can get Isaiah 34, 6. This is Isaiah chapter 34, verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with fatness. So what's that talking about? You think the Lord is coming back to let bygones be bygones? He's not going to come back to judge people? You think that's going to be the case? Come on, man. And with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord hath sacrificed in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. Right, and Apostle Tahar always mentions how this place is nothing but a great altar and how this place is just gonna be sacrificed. And it makes total sense because when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when these prophecies come to pass, when the Lord comes back, you either gonna be delivered from the destruction or you're just gonna be left to die, all right? Or you're just gonna get caught up out there in Jacob's jungle. You might just die before you before you even see the mystery. See, that's how swift the judgment of the Lord is going to be when the time comes. It says, and the unicorns shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. Vengeance and recompense. And for what? For all the wrong that's been done to us as a nation. All right? You think about how he still got this land, he got it through what? Colonialism, he slaughtered the Native Americans. You know what I'm saying? He still keeps us down to this to this day. He still he still oppresses us. Alright? And he don't even care to make it right. 
So the most high got to make it right. Exactly. I mean, you would think, being that he's so, he's, he's on top, he got all the money in the world, you would think that he would really try to um, make things right, even though it wouldn't make anything right. right. What if you gave Jake... There's no price. Yeah. What, if, yeah, what if you gave Jake reparations? He could have done that. But he's, but he's not going to. You know why? He wants to keep us down. Yeah, that, and because he's the devil. Most, most importantly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is Isaiah 34 and 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. This is a beautiful description. Because what is this talking about ultimately? This is speaking about the destruction. All right. This is all a prophecy. It shall not be quenched nigh nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever, from generation to generation. Yeah. So the smoke from the destruction is it's just gonna be continuing. You know what I'm saying? And you know that that's. That, that really goes to show you how this place is just going to be completely wiped out and engulfed in flames. Because what is America? Like 5,000 miles square? So just picture it in your mind. This place is being completely destroyed and just marred by the missiles and by the chariots. Ain't nobody going to be able to dwell here on this land. You know what I'm saying? That's just going to be the end. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through through it forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Now let me get another piece of it. Oh, what verse you at? 11. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. The desert like creatures. Because they're going to be dwelling in this place. Because America is just going to be a desert. It's going to be wiped out. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion. The line of confusion. Meaning that you're not going to be able to decipher, oh, what is the state of Ohio, all right? Or what is this, the state borderline of New Jersey, you know what I'm saying? All the buildings, all the monuments, all the signs are just going to be wiped out. This is Isaiah 61 and 4. And they shall build the old ways, and they shall raise up the former desolation. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. Right, because there's going to be a destruction in not just America. America's going to be wiped out, but there's going to be destruction in other parts of the world as well. So the other parts of the world that catch the destruction, they're going to be built back up. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Right, so what is this speaking about? Talking about the other nations that are going to be our servants. Right. Because we're going we're gonna to be a nation of great substance, you know? We're going to have our lands, you know? We're going to have, we're gonna, we're gonna have cattle, you know, we're going to have farms. We're going to be producing our own food. We're not going to have to rely on the man's system, resource system. Right. And his grid to, to, to get fed. We're going to have our own food system. All right? And it's going to be organic. It's going to be natural. Right? And kill it. Eat it the same day. Exactly. So, farm the table. You think we're going to put in the work in those farms? Farming is hard work. Right. It's a lot of work. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the minister of our the ministers of our God. 
ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Yeah, we shall eat the riches, the riches of the Gentiles. Right? So everything they got, especially everything that they stole, guess what? It's gonna come back to us. Right. Because we just read how the most high he's he's gonna bring forth judgment and recompense. For your shame, ye shall have double, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Right. So we're gonna give what we owe and then some. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we've really been marginalized in this society. Right. For that hell you know that we got put through. And we still go through hell today. You know what I'm saying? Let you. Let you. Let you try to talk back to the judge like like Tyrese did, but you don't run things over here. You're gonna get cursed out. They're gonna put you in your place. They might hold you up in contempt, contempt for court. You know what I'm saying? Right. You gotta pay more fines. That's another thing. We're subject to paying so many fines. You go over here and run a run a run a particular light. They got a camera. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna flash. You gotta pay that fine. Right. So, the society, man, it really does vex you. All right. So, there, in so many ways. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles their seed shall be known upon the Gentiles all the nations are going to know that we are the people all right we are the people of the most high we're going to have our power we're going to have our glory we're going to have our rulership and the nations they're going to wish that they were us all right remember, remember when our Balaam was a Balaam he said, let my death be the death so that he can come back and be um, an Israelite. Basically, he said that. He, wanted, he wants his latter end to be like us. What is that? Numbers 20, 20, um, 22 or 23? 23. You got it? Yeah. This is Numbers 23 and 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. Right, because we're going to have a great future, all right? We have a bright future ahead of us. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, yo, I know I'm not an Israelite, but I wish I could be one. Why would he say that? Because he knows what's coming to pass. But you let a, but you let a pastor tell, tell it, they'll be like, oh... God made everybody, and he loves everybody, right? You know what I'm saying? God made everybody equal. We're all children of God. You know, they, they always yeah. push that. Yeah. Especially you, sir. But why is he making this separation? Why is he saying he wishes that he could be an Israel? Because this book truly speaks how we're going to have power over the earth. We're going to have the riches blessing the blessing is ultimately going to go to us you know what i'm saying these prophecies i mean they, they don't lie right you got to break them down correctly the israelites we got the truth all right these christians they don't understand prophecy they don't understand much of anything really let, let, let somebody try to let a christian try to break this down what is it like like yo know, what's this talking about John 316 <laughs> says and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people all that see them shall acknowledge them that they are see are they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul shall be joyful in my God, in my God, 
for he had clothed me with the garments of salvation. He had covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride ordaineth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Listen to that. Now give Revelation 16 and 15. Revelation chapter 16 verse 15 Behold I come as a thief Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments If you're not if you're not privy to this knowledge and this truth if you're not paying attention to prophecy and what's really going on in the world then the day of the Lord is going to come as a surprise to you You know how like a thief breaks into your house to a person's house at night, you're not really expecting it or anticipating it. For, you're in total shock. But the day of the Lord is not going to come as a surprise to us because we're watching. We're watching what's going on around us. Okay. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Right, and we're telling you that you got to put on your garment, your spiritual garment. We're telling you that you're walking around naked. You don't got no protection on you. All right, but as it is written, a lot of our people they're not going to take heed to what we're saying. They're going to just take it lightly. Right. And guess what? They're going to get caught up out there ultimately. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air and there came a great voice of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done and there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth this is speaking about the destruction that's getting ready to take place so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fire of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and the mountains were not found, meaning the other the other nations, all right? Because mountains are likened unto governments and rulerships, all right? And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. There fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Right, and that plague is speaking about the missiles. Right, the missiles can be likened unto a plague. This is raining down like hail. You know what I'm saying? Right. Finish up on that? Yeah, that's it. All right, so we'll close out on that one. So we want to give all praises to you. How about you? 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 How about you?